Hello again. Today our topic is axis matrix. The general model protection can be viewed as a matrix called an axis matrix. The rows of the matrix represent domains and the columns represent objects. Each entry in the matrix consists of a set of axis rights. The entry axis IJ defines the set of operations that the process executing in domain DI can invoke an object OJ. The axis matrix can implement policy decisions concerning protection. The policy decision involves which rights should be included in the IJ entry. Usually, the user decides the contents of the axis matrix entries. When a user creates a new object, the column of that object is added to the axis matrix with the appropriate initialization entries as decided by the creator. We may include some rights in some entries in this new column and other rights in other entries as required. Consider the following axis matrix with four domains and four objects. A process executing in domain one can read files F1 and F3. A process executing in domain two can use the laser printer. A process executing in domain three can read file two and execute file three, etc. So file two can be read only by the process executing in domain three. And the laser printer can be used only by a process executing in domain two. The axis matrix provides a mechanism for defining and implementing strict control for both static and dynamic association between processes and domains. The switch operation can be used to switch from domain to another. Domain switching can be controlled by including domains among the objects of the axis matrix. A switching from domain DI to domain DJ is allowed if and only if the axis right switch belongs to axis IJ. For example, in this figure, domain one can switch only to domain two. Domain two can switch to both domains, D3 and D4. And domain D4 can switch only to domain D1. Allowing control change in the contents of the axis matrix entries requires three additional operations, copy, owner, and control. The ability to copy an axis right from one domain or row of the axis matrix to another is denoted by an asterisk appended to the axis right. The copy right allows the axis right to be copied only within the same column for which the right is defined. For example, in this figure, a process executing in domain two can copy the read operation into any entry associated with the file F2, as is shown here. Propagation of the copyright may be limited. This means when the right R asterisk is copied from axis IJ to axis KJ, only the right R is created. So a process executing in domain DK cannot perform the copy on the right R. Another variation is used when a right is copied from axis IJ to axis KJ, it's then removed from axis IJ. The addition and removal of new rights is performed using the owner right. If axis IJ includes the owner right, then a process executing in domain DI can add and remove any right in any entry in column J. For example, in this figure, domain D1 is the owner of the file F1. Therefore, it can add and delete any valid rights in column F1. 
here the right to execute in domain G3 is removed. In the same manner, domain 2 is the owner of file F2. So it can add and remove any rights for the file F2. For example, write operation is added for this file in domain G3. The copy and owner rights allows a process to change the entries in a column. To change the entries in the row, the control right is used. To access IJ includes the control right, then a process executing in domain DI can remove any access right from row J. For example, suppose in this figure, we include the control right in access D2, D4. Then a process executing in D2 can modify the domain D4. Here, the read operations for files F1 and F3 are removed from the above figure. The access matrix model allow us to implement and control dynamic protection requirements. New objects and new domains can be created dynamically and included in the access matrix model. In the next meeting, we'll discuss the methods to implement the access matrix. For today, that's all. Thank you.